So good morning and uh, welcome back to our course on environmental bioethics within the program of bioethics, the master's in bioethics at St. Thomas University. Beginning as always with a little prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed Trinity, we love you, we adore you, we thank you for all your many blessings, especially in the midst of this uh, difficulty and challenge of the coronavirus infection here locally in Miami-Dade County, Broward, and uh, throughout the world. We know, Lord, that you are with us, that you inspire us, especially during these challenging times, to move forward according to your divine will, because you love us, Lord, intensely, and you will not abandon us. Allow us to uh, be prudent during this time so we can minimize the rate of infection once and for all and move forward that uh, this uh, pandemic may subside uh, according to your will. Allow us to be responsible people. And on this 4th of July, we want to thank you also for the blessings that we enjoy, the privilege of being in this country in spite of its own difficulties. Uh, you have blessed us abundantly, abundantly Lord, with a freedom of uh, religious expression and what is to this date known as the American experiment of uh, freedom for everyone, allowing all faiths and confessions to be um, <clears throat> supported in society, uh, to live in a civilized way. We pray for reconciliation among different cultures and ethnicities here in the US that we may move forward as one nation with all the blessings that you do give us on a daily basis, Lord. We continue to pray also at this time for those who are in most need of your divine mercy. In the name of Christ, our Lord, amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, so <clears throat> we have covered uh, basic areas of the environment on earth beginning with the uh, earth itself, the geophysics, uh, the geo component of the earth, then the atmospheric component, then the water component. Uh, now we're going to look at um, cycles, okay? Because uh, cycles in nature are uh, very important. Everything is cycling. Uh, on a natural basis, which is uh, very interesting how mm, these cycles occur. Some are very rapid, occur within a few minutes or few seconds in the metabolic process. Other cycles take uh, days, years, centuries, millennia, and even millions of years. Uh, so we have all different scales of uh, cycling, uh, time-wise. <clears throat> But the interesting thing is that nature kind of lives by these cycles and the interaction that occurs, the myriad interactions that occur in these cycles at the level of matter and energy. All right, so staying with the big picture for now, it is an extremely complex and exciting and interesting uh, dynamic that we live and most of the time we don't really pay attention, even just our metabolism, for example, who is conscious of our digestion unless something goes wrong, right? Otherwise, we just let it happen by itself. And within a few hours, our nutrients are replenished in our body. Even cellular cycles that occur um, periodically, they say that uh, by the time we get to our early adulthood, we probably don't have a single cell of the ones that we were born with, all right? And we were already born with trillions of cells as uh, babies, uh, but cells are recycled also, broken down, digested, and the nutrients reabsorbed and used up for making new cells. So nature is constantly cycling, very interesting. And that's why it's important also for us to follow suit, as it were, and be good stewards of the environment and get into recycling, all right? Uh, recycling because notice that we're the only ones, the only species that can actually produce garbage that can last, way outlast our own lifespan. Let's say we live, you know, 100 years, uh, which is a long lifespan for a human being, 
uh, plastics and electronic components, for example, could last potentially thousands of years or even more. So uh, the trash that we produce by living out, uh, outlives us, which means that there's an accumulating factor over time in nature because we're also gonna put our garbage. Mm -hmm. So we really, really need to get into uh, recycling mode, all right? And we'll get into that into the second half of the lecture. And also this bioremediation where nature has been damaged uh, um, lightly or severely uh, because nature has a tendency also to restore itself. It's amazing how nature will leave it alone and it regenerates as we have been observing in the past six months <laughs> when we have had to uh, um, kind of shut down our human activities, uh, uh, some of which have ha uh, typically have negative impact on nature. Well, we see that nature is recovering just by itself. Okay, okay, so that's kind of the big picture. Stop for a moment, as always, asking if there are any uh, questions or comments uh, to be made at this point before moving forward. Nothing? Okay, or from previous um, lectures, anything? <clears throat> All right, uh, let's move forward then. So we're gonna look at uh, natural cycles. <clears throat> some of the big ones, and then just in passing uh, smaller cycles. And then, like I mentioned, uh, mostly in the second half of the lecture today, we'll look at um, human uh, recycling, all right? And I have uh, some interesting videos there to show. So within the natural cycles, uh, the big ones are the water cycle, the carbon and carbon dioxide cycle, the oxygen cycle, nitrogen cycle, and then other uh, natural cycles of uh, minerals, um, and that again I'll mention in passing, all right? But these four major ones will look a little more detail. Beginning always with water, because uh, water, as I was mentioning, is uh, such a basic element, uh, such a basic uh, molecule compound for us to live and for have organic life on earth, right? At the, the liquid stage of water is what allows for the possibility of life, mm, together with a benevolent temperature. So liquid water is, uh, is an effect of having that benevolent temperature that we have because of our particular uh, distance range to, uh, to the sun as a planet planet as a whole. All right, so let's look at the water cycle and some interesting aspects here. Let's say we begin at the ocean, which is most of the surface of the earth, right? Around 75%, three quarters of the surface of the earth is ocean. And by volume, by volume, going down into uh, the, uh, the oceans of the world mostly, uh, but also fresh water, all the water, uh, in the, is uh, more than 90% by volume of the mass on the, um, let's say on the crust of the earth, okay? So the argument has been made that we should really be calling our planet, uh, planet ocean <laughs> rather than planet earth. However, being kind of uh, egocentric uh, because we live on earth and we're terrestrial, then that's what we call it on the, on the earth side or the dry side of uh, things. Okay, so if we begin at the oceans and mostly at the surface, well, I had covered uh, from uh, last lecture the whole component of salt water, right? Uh, the salinity that uh, is about uh, 35 parts per thousand, mm -hmm. 35 parts per thousand. That is the, the um, ionic solution of minerals, mostly about a dozen major uh, minerals that are dissolved in salt, not just sodium chloride, table salt is one of them, but then there um, another dozen or so minerals dissolved in uh, seawater that makes it salty, okay? Now, where did those minerals come from? Uh, in case I forgot to mention it, mostly by erosion. And that's why I had kind of a progression talking about erosion of um, mountains and sediment and soil as uh, the, the uh, rain falls and runs down the um, uh, rivers, it is dissolving earth, literally dissolving soil into the water, minerals dissolve in, and then all most, uh, most rivers of the world end up emptying in some kind of an ocean 
sometimes in lakes. And so when we accelerate that process for the past uh, four billion years, more or less, when we had a already kind of a consolidated crust with all the water falling, uh, the rain, it has made the ocean salty, okay? And so it's been a gradual process of uh, deposition, if you will, of salts, uh, but they're in solution. So the ocean is salty, but what evaporates from the surface of the ocean is mostly uh, water, H2O, okay, pure water. So you can consider it a kind of a distillation process that occurs naturally, mostly because of uh, heat, but also the dynamic interaction of molecules, of water molecules at the surface of the ocean, all right, like the surface of any liquid, of any uh, uh, liquid, is going to have some dynamic exchange of molecules, some of which are leaving the solution into a gaseous form, and some of those uh, molecules in gaseous form are coming back into solution, uh, but the whole thing is to break that surface tension, okay, and uh, one easy way to break that surface tension, for example, is just by heat, all right, because it supplies the energy, the activation energy necessary for those molecules to become a little looser and then give way and go into the gaseous state. So bottom line, what is occurring at the surface of the oceans or any body of water, natural body of water, including lakes and rivers, all right, is evaporation. Evaporation, which uh, you can barely see the white uh, lettering here uh, against a white background. <laughs> uh, you can see it a little better here. But there is major evaporation occurring at the surface of uh, the oceans and the lakes of the world and even uh, rivers uh, more slightly, and that is mostly pure H2O, H2O, okay? Now, we do get some uh, salt also coming out uh, by the same basic effect of the dynamic interaction of the molecules of the ions leaving the surface, and but those, uh, mm, those molecules or ions of uh, salt or minerals get picked up mostly by wind, and typically are move sideways or on stable internet. Uh, folks uh, may have the same issue as last time with the internet here. If at some point I lose the connection, please um, uh, call me on my cell phone, all right? And I may have to move over <laughs> to the office like last time. I forgot to, to consider that. Uh, can you still hear me? and see the presentation? Yes, but it's a little grainy. It's grainy? Yeah, what I'm seeing is a little blurry, just a little bit. Anyone yes, I, I can see it, but it, yeah, it's very, it's blurry. It's not, it's not sharp at all. Not sharp. Okay, uh, let me do this. Let's... Um... Yeah, that's better. It, it seems to go like, it's it trying is. to focus and then it goes back to... To, to fuzzy. Okay. Like right now, it's readable. Yeah. Okay. It, but it, even though it's a little fuzzy, but then it like it goes back to where you can't read it mm. at all. So it's like it's like it's trying to focus, but then it slips back to fuzzy. It may be an interaction between my connection and your connection. Anyone else getting uh, fuzziness or blurry? Yes, it has been like that from the beginning. Really. Okay, let me bite the bullet. I'm gonna close down for a moment and um, go over to the uh, uh, to the office. Okay, I'm sorry I forgot to do this because uh, the internet in our rectory is kind of weak in our in our house. So let me go over to the office instead. Um, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, give me about five minutes. Okay. Five All right, minutes. Father. Okay, Father. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. So let me see if I can pause this like I did last time and pick it up over there again. Okay, no problem. All right, thank you. 